Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you how to create your own motion activated Halloween display using one motion sensor to control multiple electronic parts that require different voltages. And we'll do this without Arduino. This video doesn't show a specific Halloween decoration, but it shows you how to make the connections between a motion sensor and a multi-channel relay. If you recall, a couple years ago I posted a similar video where a motion sensor activated an MP3 module. Well, I've been getting questions and comments on that video for quite a while and the most recent question was how do I activate this mp3 module and a 12 volt motor for my Halloween animatronics? Now I currently don't own a 12 volt motor so what we're going to do is trigger three LEDs with 12 volt power supplied to them as well as a 5 volt mp3 player board using one motion sensor. Now the easiest way to do this since the LEDs require 12 volts and the mp3 player board requires 5 volts is to supply two different voltages this plug is a 12 volt 2 amp power supply and I'll use that to power the LEDs. I'm using a breadboard power supply to provide 5 volts to the motion sensor and to the MP3 player board and I'm using this wall adapter here. It is a 9 volt 1 amp power supply. I can plug this wall adapter straight into the breadboard power supply because the breadboard power supply has a 5 volt regulator. This is the motion sensor that I'm using. They are very cheap so if you did get a bad one I would not be surprised. You can usually order them off Amazon $8 for about 10 or so of them. Um, it, once you turn this around here, there's a couple things you want to notice on the back. Uh, this pin here on the far right is the ground pin. The middle pin is the signal pin. The pin on the left is the positive pin or the VCC. And it's usually 5 volts, but it can do like 4 to 20 volts. But it's usually powered, this uh, module, by 5 volts. And that's what we're using today. Up here is your jumper select and you have two options. You have L which is written right there and in the bottom one is H. Right now it's on L. L is our single trigger option. That means that it will play our entire song, our entire mp3 until it's over. And if you put it on the H uh, option here, you would remove the yellow jumper pack and then cover the bottom pin and the middle pin. And the H option is multiple trigger, meaning if you play your mp3, it can trigger motion can trigger your mp3 to start over and over without your mp3 actually finishing. So for this purpose we're using the L option, single trigger. Now if you flip it up on top here you'll see two potentiometers. This one controls the distance and the data sheet says that the distance is good for 3 to 7 meters or 9 to 21 feet. I have no problem activating this at one foot. So you might want to play around with that. If you want to increase the distance detection, you turn it clockwise all the way here, just like this. If you want to decrease your uh, distance detection, you want to ignore all the stuff that's further away, you turn it counterclockwise, just like that. This potentiometer is for time delay. Time delay is somewhere between one second and three minutes, although they may vary because these are very cheap, so you might want to play around with that. If you want to increase your time delay, you turn this potentiometer clockwise and that is maximum time and then if you want to decrease time delay for the signal you turn it all the way back to the counterclockwise position and time delay will determine how long the signal is being sent to the relay for instance when the lights go off the time delay time is up so if you want to extend the amount of time that the lights are on in, in our video here you would turn this clockwise I hope that makes sense so you can play with those as well to get your own project uh, to fit your needs. Since we shouldn't use 12 volts in a breadboard, we're going to go ahead and use these dual row screw terminal strips. One strip will be for positive and one will be for negative. The Amazon post says that it's rated for 600 volts at 15 amps and the terminal block itself is made of ABS plastic while the screw terminal is made of nickel plated copper. It also comes with a PVC insulated fork connector and once installed it looks like this blue one right here. Since each one of these terminals is insulated from the next, it's convenient for us to use this fork connector so that we can use one terminal block as positive and one as negative. It also comes with different size crimp connectors, but since we're not making anything permanent, we're not going to use them today. With that said, let's go ahead and see how we put this thing together. You might remember this MP3 player board that I used two years ago in a video. The only modification I did was cut the button off and replace it with, in this case, a motion sensor. The whole purpose of this exercise was to remove the button and create a hands-free motion activated mp3 sound using the motion sensor and a relay and make it easy enough for just anybody to do and without an Arduino. 
You can see the two wires that were connected to the button at one time. The black one is ground, the white one is positive, and they're connected to terminal 1 of the relay. To provide power to the MP3 module, the red wire is connected to the 5 volt rail of the breadboard. The black wire is connected to the negative rail of the breadboard. The positive and negative pins of the motion sensor are connected to the positive and negative rails of the breadboard, while the signal pin of the motion sensor is connected to the breadboard and connected to all four items that we want to control using the relay. The signal pin can be identified by the brown wire. The 12 volt plug from the wall has a wire adapter attached to the end of it, with the positive wire going straight to the positive terminal block and the negative wire going straight to the negative terminal block. All three of our 12 volt LED strips are connected the same way, but it doesn't matter which relay terminal each one is connected to. This is a picture of the 8 channel relay that I'm using. Keep in mind that you should keep the jumper on the JD VCC option on the right. That has to do with how you supply power to the relay. Relays are great because you can control high voltage electronics by using low voltage electronics, such as a 5 volt Arduino. High voltage and low voltage circuits are kept separate by use of an optocoupler and this allows a low voltage signal to open and close a high voltage circuit without damaging electronics. You can see the voltage and amperage ratings printed on top of the relays, but you can also switch on and off 12 volt and 5 volt electronics like we're going to do here today as long as you supply 5 volts at the VCC pin and each IN pin of the relay that you're using. If you decide to use your relays for high voltage in the future, be sure to look up safety tips so you don't get injured. This is the wiring diagram for my setup. I've run this a couple times over an hour each time without any problems. This is the diagram for what I call the high voltage side. Now let's take a look at the diagram for what I call the low voltage side. You can see that the MP3 player module, the motion sensor, and the relay are all connected to 5 volt power through the breadboard, while the four signal pins on the relay board are connected to the signal pin of the motion sensor. Here are the actual connections that I have here on the desktop. You can see that the LEDs are connected to the terminal blocks here, and you can see how they're connected to the relays as well. Over here, you can take a closer look here. The signal pin, that brown wire there from the motion sensor, how that is connected to all of the IN1 through IN4 pins. Those are the relay pins. They're all connected together there. Here's a look at the breadboard power supply. Make sure that you have that jumper select over the 5 volt to supply 5 volts to your rails on the breadboard. And there's a look at all of it right there. Here's a Happy Halloween track that I made. I made that short voice track with Audio Hacker Voice Changer. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. Be sure to check it out. Remember, if I want to lengthen or shorten the amount of time the lights are on, I can use the time delay adjustment on the motion sensor to do that. Here's a shorter version of what you just saw. And it's already reset. Thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you found it helpful, be sure to like it by giving it a thumbs up, share it with somebody, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again very soon.